gentlemen, mes seigneurs, gentlemen, mes gentils hommes, on this day and at this time, it is my duty but mainly my pleasure as official town crier for the National Capital Region to bring you warm and friendly greetings to the Alwa Regional Heritage Fair 2021. These are the virtual award ceremonies. Il est de mon devoir, mais avant tout de mon gré, en tant que crieur de ce comté, de vous accueillir comme il se doit à cet événement de choix, soit cette fête régionale du patrimoine à Ottawa, cette remise de prix virtuelle 2021. Mais le ceremony begin! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, quick, 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 Ani Sego. And welcome to the very first virtual edition of the Ottawa Regional Heritage Fair. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Daniel Richer de la Fleche, and I'm the official town crier for the National Capital Region of Ottawa Gatineau. Bienvenue à tous et à toutes à cette première édition virtuelle de la Fête régionale du patrimoine à Ottawa. Pour ceux et celles qui ne me connaissent pas, Je m'appelle Daniel Richer, dit la flèche, et je suis le crieur officiel de la région de la capitale nationale d'Ottawa Gatineau. Now, I would like to acknowledge that Ottawa is built on unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe Nation. I would like to honor the land and peoples of the Algonquin Anishinaabe Nation, whose ancestors have lived on this territory for millennia, and whose culture and presence have nurtured and continue to nurture this land. I would also like to honor all First Nations, Inuit and Métis people, their elders, their ancestors, and their valuable past and present contribution to this land. Nous aimerions reconnaître que, sur, que nous sommes sur des terres non cédées, Algonquin Anishinaabe, et que les peuples de la nation Algonquin Anishinaabe vivent dans ce lieu depuis des millénaires. Leur culture et leur présence l'ont imprégné et l'imprègnent encore. La ville d'Ottawa rend hommage au peuple et au territoire de la nation Algonquin Anishinaabe. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are here today to highlight student excellence and creativity through a variety of community-based awards. During the ceremony, you will also hear from Ottawa Regional Heritage Fair partners, volunteers, teachers, and committee members. Cette cérémonie sert à reconnaître l'excellence et la créativité des élèves grâce à une variété de prix de nos partenaires communautaires. Des bénévoles, des partenaires, des éducateurs et des membres du comité de la fête y prendront aussi la parole. The Heritage Fair Committee has been working hard to organize a virtual event that gives students the opportunity to explore Canadian history and to celebrate the results of their efforts in a virtual learning environment. To tell you more about the fair program and this virtual celebration, here is the chair of the Ottawa Regional Heritage Fair, Dame Jacinthe Caron. Thank you, Daniel Richer, and congratulations on celebrating your 40th anniversary as the National Capital Region's official town crier. You are more than a town crier and master of ceremonies. You're also a remarkable storyteller and actor. Daniel est un crieur public doué et un merveilleux conteur. Nous attendons avec impatience la présentation qu'il nous offrira bientôt. I'd also like to thank Gavin, Stan, and everyone at Rogers TV for hosting our virtual award ceremony and helping us to recognize and celebrate student learning. Tel que mentionné, je suis la présidente du comité de la fête régionale du patrimoine à Ottawa. 
Je suis très fière d'être membre bénévole de ce comité, et ce depuis plus de 15 ans, et d'avoir l'occasion de travailler avec un groupe de personnes dynamiques, comprenant des membres de la communauté muséale et patrimoniale, d'éducateurs et de professionnels retraités, et d'anciens étudiants passionnés par le patrimoine. As a member of the FAIR Committee, I can't think of a better team to work with, in particular this year as we take on a new virtual initiative for the first time in the history of our FAIR. But this team goes beyond the virtual walls of our committee. It extends to our teachers, our students, our volunteers, and our partners. Together, we work to preserve and share Ottawa's past for future generations. We understand that these are difficult times and that teachers have been working hard to support students' learning and well-being. Thank you for all that you do and for your support of our fair. Although our Heritage Fair looks a little different this year, we're happy to be able to bring everyone together virtually to recognize our students' creativity and achievements. Fondée en 2002, la Fête régionale du patrimoine à Ottawa offre un programme éducatif bilingue dans le but d'inspirer les élèves à explorer un aspect de l'histoire, du patrimoine et de la culture du Canada dans un environnement d'apprentissage dynamique et captivant. Depuis sa création, la Fête a accueilli des milliers d'élèves des conseils scolaires publics et catholiques de la région d'Ottawa-Carlton, des écoles privées, du réseau éducatif des Premières Nations de Pequacanagan, ainsi que les élèves dans un programme d'enseignement à domicile. Au fur et à mesure que les jeunes explorent leur histoire et leur patrimoine, le programme de la Fête leur permettra de développer des liens solides dans la collectivité et d'avoir la confiance pour devenir des citoyens actifs qui façonneront l'avenir du Canada. The Ottawa Regional Heritage Fair Committee is proud to have fostered important partnerships throughout the years. The program is made possible through the support of our official patron, the Historical Society of Ottawa, our event partners, the Canadian Museum of History and the Canadian War Museum, our newest partner, Rogers TV, our award partners, and through financial support from the City of Ottawa. Throughout the ceremony, we will be featuring messages from our partners, as well as from our students, volunteers, teachers, and student alumnus of the Fair. Le Comité de la Fête est fier de compter parmi ses nombreux partenaires, la Société historique d'Ottawa, le partenaire officiel de la Fête. Saviez-vous que ce partenariat a été conçu par Monsieur Clip Scott, l'un des premiers fondateurs de la Fête régionale du patrimoine à Ottawa et ancien président de la Société historique d'Ottawa. Cliff Scott, one of the original founders of the fair and former president of the Historical Society of Ottawa, recognized the importance of fostering a cross-generational relationship with the Historical Society of Ottawa and in working together to preserve and share Ottawa's past. We are very proud of this partnership and greatly appreciate the Society's valuable support of our fair over the many years. To begin the ceremony, let's hear from Karen Lynn Wallet, President of the Historical Society of Ottawa. Thank you. As you may or may not know, the HSO was founded way back in 1898, and we also started up this fair in the year 2000. Since then, we have proudly acted as the fair's patron. Every year we provide the event medals, as well as two very special awards, the Richard Scott Award and the Sacred Chaudière Falls Award. Nous sommes très honorés d'appuyer cette fête, reconnaissant l'infatigable équipe de la fête, et nous sommes surtout fiers de vous et de vos projets. Mettre sur pied un projet de recherche est toujours un défi, mais cette dernière année a été la plus difficile de toutes les années, et je suis tellement fier de vous tous qui avez surmonté les défis liés à votre environnement scolaire en constante évolution pour mettre sur pied un brillant projet numérique, mettant en valeur l'histoire du Canada. Thank you also to the teachers and parents who've, who have supported you, and I hope to see you all in person next year. Thank you, Karen Lynn. We are thankful for community partners' continued support of our fair throughout the years. Thanks to their generous contributions, we're able to offer a variety of awards to recognize the students' outstanding research projects. The Fair Committee would also like to recognize the support of our provincial and national partners. The Ontario Heritage Fairs program supports the regional heritage fair programs in Ontario so that every student is provided with the opportunity to participate in a fair or an online showcase during their years at school. 
L'Association des fêtes du patrimoine de l'Ontario donne aux élèves la possibilité de présenter leurs projets par l'entremise de programmes tels que la fête provinciale et Our Shared Stories, ainsi que les programmes virtuels Nos Histoires, Nos Voix et Jeunes citoyens de la Société Histoire Canada. Our provincial and national partners also offer a variety of community-based awards. One of these awards is the Ontario Heritage Fairs Association Founders Award. The Founders Award recognizes two projects that best interpret various aspects of Canadian history and heritage. Le prix des fondateurs de l'Association des fêtes du patrimoine de l'Ontario reconnaît le projet qui explore le mieux l'un des aspects du patrimoine et de l'histoire du Canada. The winner of the first Ontario Heritage Fairs Association Founders Award is Michael Gadza from Glashan Public School for his project titled Who Were the Acadians and How Did They Shape Canada and North America? Congratulations! Hello. My name is Michael Gadza from Glashan Public School. The reason I chose to do my project on the Acadians is because they are an incredibly important part in Canadian culture that most people don't know about. One of the most interesting facts I learned about them is that they lived in harmony with the Macaw Aboriginals. In fact, 350 of the Macaw words were derived from the Acadians. Another surprising fact is that the Acadians formed the Cajun culture in New Orleans in the United States after the expulsion from Canada. Acadians are a unique group of people that have been able to maintain their cultures in 1605 and at the same time being Canadian and part of Canadian society and its culture. I would now like to announce the winner of our second Ontario Heritage Fairs Association Founders Award. And the winner of the Ontario Heritage Fairs Association Founders Award is Yit Yarengu Mayoglu from Glashan Public School for the project entitled What Shaped Canadian Culture? Congratulations! Hello. My name is Yi Chang Mileolu from Glashan Public School. The reason for why I chose the topic What Shaped Canadian Culture was because I didn't know a lot about French Canadian culture as I'm a newcomer to Canada, and I was interested to learn more about it. I learned all sorts of stuff in my project, like how French Canadians came to be, or how the fur trade affected the Canadian. I was really excited to learn all this new information. This project meant a lot to me, and as I said earlier, the reason it meant to it meant a lot to me was because it showed me all sorts of stuff about a topic which I barely knew anything about. I would now like to announce the winner of our next provincial award, the Historical Thinking Award. This award recognizes student achievement that demonstrates outstanding ability to think critically using historical thinking. Le prix pour la pensée historique reconnaît l'élève qui démontre une capacité exceptionnelle dans l'utilisation de la pensée historique. And the Historical Thinking Award goes to Ian Barker from the Ottawa Carleton Virtual School for his project titled The Impacts of Canadian Rebellions and Political Ideologies. Congratulations! Greetings, my name is Ian Barker. For the Ottawa Regional and Heritage Fair, I created a, um, a project entitled The Impacts of Canadian Rebellion and Political Ideologies. I chose this topic because I am interested in political philosophy. I think the, the topic is important as by understanding our history, we are better equipped to understand where we are today. I discussed the Rebellion Acts of 1837 and I examined the inequalities between the royal government and the citizens of Lower and Upper Canada. I also discussed the Northwest Rebellion of 1885, and I look at the discrimination experienced by the Métis. One of the things that I learned was that the, violent, that the violent revolutions had occurred. There was a strong resistance to let go of power once it had been attained. And ultimately, and somewhat ironically, as ordinary people achieved some degree of power for themselves, they were not necessarily willing to, do, to see others in a similar situation to gain power. 
in conclusion, this has been an interesting project for me, and I've learned a lot. I'd like to thank the people who have given me the opportunity to tell everyone about my project. Je suis maintenant heureux de vous présenter notre prochain conférencier, son honneur Jim Watson, maire de la ville d'Ottawa, qui est un passionné de l'histoire du Canada et de notre fête. Nous avons eu l'honneur de l'accueillir à plusieurs de nos fêtes dans le passé et sommes très heureux de l'accueillir une fois encore cette année lors de notre fête virtuelle. Your Worship, votre honneur. On behalf of the City of Ottawa and my colleagues on City Council, it's my pleasure to bring you virtual greetings today for the 18th annual Ottawa Regional Heritage Fair. I'd like to welcome all of the students who are participating in today's event, as well as their families who have joined us. It's great to see uh, so many students here today who enjoy learning about history. I also want to extend my appreciation to the partners, judges, teachers and student alumni who have joined today to support this great event. There have been many historical moments for our country over the last century and a half and it's events just like this one that helps uh, to not only educate us about this history but also help uh, us create our rich history itself. History helps us learn from our past, it also uh, helps us improve our decision making, it helps us see how our society has changed throughout the generations and it provides uh, us with a better understanding of people and culture. And maybe best of all, it's also interesting and fun. Thank you to the teachers for your interest in history and for passing on your enthusiasm for the subject to future generations. And thank you as well to the parents for fueling your child's or children's enjoyment of history and heritage. The City of Ottawa is pleased to support this great event through the presentation of the City of Ottawa Local History Award which recognizes a project that discusses Ottawa's local history. I want to wish everyone the best of luck today. Bonne chance à tous, and thank you again for your love of history. Merci beaucoup, à la prochaine. Thank you, Mayor Watson. The City of Ottawa Local History Award is given to a project discussing Ottawa local history. For the first time, we are unable to give out this award this year as a review of the projects indicated that there is not one that meets the local history award criteria. However, it is important to highlight our local history as well as this award. Bien que le prix Histoire locale de la Ville d'Ottawa ne peut être remis cette année, il est important de souligner l'histoire de notre région ainsi que ce prix. In 2017, Samantha Rosenfeld, who was at Cedarview Middle School, submitted a project for the Ottawa Regional Heritage Fair entitled Ottawa and its Many Pockets of Small Communities. Her project was the recipient of that year's City of Ottawa Local History Award, and following the fair, Samantha created a video of her project for the Young Citizens Program. Samantha values the importance of culture and history and how her generation is essential to keeping our history alive. She is also a strong supporter of the fair program, so much so that she joined our committee as the Student Alumni Program Coordinator. Here is Samantha's submission to the 2017 Young Citizens Program. Hi, my name is Jim Watson, Mayor of the City of Ottawa. You know, Ottawa has one of the largest rural communities in the entire country. In fact, you can fit the cities of Calgary, Edmonton, Toronto, Montreal, and Vancouver within the boundaries of Ottawa, and we're still bigger and 82% of our land mass is rural. So go and appreciate rural Canada. Go and visit your family and friends in rural Canada, because without rural Canada, there wouldn't be an urban Canada. Hi, I'm Samantha. I want a bike path southeast of Ottawa. This bike path may not seem like much, but that's only if you don't take the time to consider the history behind all these small places. The bike path was actually once a railway line. At one time, the New York and Central Railway operated in this spot. Over the years, this line was used to ship lumber to the US, Russell Brick to the Ottawa and beyond, and of course, the commuters. The more I think about it, the more I realize that there's so many stories like these hidden throughout Canada. We're gonna go on a little journey. Maybe we'll be able to find something like this hidden in your own backyard. We're here at Circle J Ranch. It's a family-owned horse farm. We tend to take our transportation for granted. A lot of times with our new technology now, it's really easy to get around. But if you really think about it, in the past, horses were our only transportation. The rural community is approximately 2,500 square kilometers. 
I don't know about you, but that seems like a pretty far distance to me. I think we need a better way for transportation. But first, we're going to take a stop at the museum. We're here at the Canada Aviation and Space Museum. This is a North American Harvard. It was one of the training aircrafts during World War II. Many times during broad daylight they would practice, but the real challenge was over nighttime when they would have emergency landings because of the malfunctions. Next stop, we're going to go see some of these landing strips. Today we're here at the Rockcliffe Flying Club, and instead of taking a car, we're going to take a real plane and see the sights that I've been talking about. Here is where the landing strip was. Pilots would at night cut their engines and practice restarts. They would do emergency glide landings here. Residents who were children during the war would tell stories of hearing these planes train at night. As you look down below, you will see a field of solar panels where a runway used to be. I don't know about you, but I find it fitting that what was once associated with war now provides clean renewable energy. Some progress is good. Below us, you will notice a large lake. This is actually the remains of a shale quarry used in making bricks. The quarry has now become part of the local ecosystem, but there are those who wish to use it as a dump. Some progress creates controversy. So there's been a lot to think about. The food, the mill products, the rustle brick, and the timber. All of this came from the countryside. Many of the young men from the rural communities would volunteer to go into combat. There's been a large divide between the cultures. For example, the rural and the urban, the French and the English, and the rich and the poor. What we've noticed throughout the years is that they've been able to overcome things like these. And seeing as it's Canada's 150, we have to remind ourselves that we'd be able to face these challenges too. As our tour comes to an end, I think it's important for us, for all of us, to really look into the different rural communities that created Canada. I encourage you to look into your own community and the history behind it. Thank you. Hi, my name is Samantha Rosenfeld. I'm a graduating student from St. Mark Catholic High School. I was a participant and MC of the Ottawa Regional Heritage Fair and chosen to participate in the Young Citizens Program. Additionally, I am the Local Heritage Fair Award winner given by Mayor Jim Watson in 2017. I first joined the Ottawa Regional Heritage Fair Steering Committee in the fall of 2018. My position as a member of the board is that I am the Alumni Masters of Ceremony Coordinator, as well as the caretaker of Mayor Jim Watson and Mark O'Neill. This experience has allowed me to better understand important events, people, and places that have shaped our country. Many people have lost their appreciation for our history and culture. My time with the Ottawa Regional Heritage Fair Committee, along with attending and being the MC of the fair, I have been provided with the opportunity to have a stronger connection to my family's history, along with the community that surrounds me. By doing so, I have been able to create new connections with people and further develop my understanding towards Canada's, specifically Ottawa's, culture. I believe that my time as a member of the Ottawa Regional Heritage Fair Committee has provided me with the strength and resilience that comes with hard work and time management. This amazing group of people has shaped me into a respectable and open-minded woman. As years go by, I hope to maintain my position as a member and continue to remind our generation about the history of the world that we live in. So I encourage you to participate and take part in this fair. You never know where you're gonna end up. Fair was held in 2002 at the Aberdeen Pavilion. It was then presented at Immaculata High School, followed by the Cartier Square Drill Hall in 2006. It was then held for the first time at the Canadian Museum of History 
in the following year at the Canadian War Museum. Since then, these two national museums serve as the venues for the fair exhibition. And so it now gives me great pleasure to introduce Caroline Dremaguet, acting president and CEO of the Canadian Museum of History. Hello, everyone. It's truly a pleasure to be part of this year's virtual awards ceremony for the Ottawa Regional Heritage Fair and to celebrate our shared passion for Canadian history. At the Museum of History and the War Museum, one of the most important things we do is look at the people, places, and events in Canada's story. Another is sharing Canada's fascinating history with people around the world. In many ways, you've done the same thing through your projects. You've explored the history of Canada and its people and shared your findings so that we can all benefit from what you've learned. Le musée est fier de participer à la fête depuis plus de 13 ans. Et bien que l'événement de cette année adopte un format différent, il est très gratifiant de voir à quel point vous avez su faire preuve de créativité et explorer l'histoire du Canada malgré ces temps difficiles. De nos jours, il est plus important que jamais de trouver des moyens d'entrer en relation avec les autres. Au musée, nous le faisons par l'entremise d'expositions et de ressources en ligne. La plateforme Musée à la maison, laquelle est accessible par l'entremise de, de notre site web, est particulièrement amusante. Vous pouvez y faire une visite 360 degrés de la salle d'histoire canadienne, jouer à des jeux, faire des bricolages et même partir à l'aventure en voyageant dans le temps. Il y en a vraiment pour tous les goûts, alors je vous recommande vivement d'aller jeter un coup d'œil. My museum colleagues and I also enjoy connecting with young historians like you, and it's an honor to present the Canadian Museum History Award. The winners of the award receive a framed certificate, a behind-the-scenes family tour of one of the museums, and a family membership to both the Museum of History and the War Museum for an entire year. To us, it's clear that you've already begun to shape the future through your interest in Canada's past. So I'm confident that this country is in very good hands. I can't wait to see what you'll all do next. On behalf of the Museum of History and the War Museum, my sincere congratulations to you all. Thank you. Merci au Musée canadien d'histoire et au Musée canadien de la guerre de votre soutien continu. Dame Jacinthe va maintenant annoncer le nom du gagnant ou de la gagnante du prix du Musée canadien de l'histoire. The Canadian Museum of History Award is given to a project that has earned the highest overall mark in all categories, clarity and organization of the topic, its relevance to Canadian heritage, the originality, the critical interpretation of research data, and the historical significance of the project. Le prix du Musée canadien d'histoire est remis à l'élève ou au groupe d'élèves dont le projet aura obtenu la note globale la plus élevée en tenant compte de toutes les catégories. And the Canadian Museum of History Award goes to Jack Cronin from Glashan Public School for his project titled How Did the Second Industrial Age Change Canadian Society? Congratulations! Congratulations to the winner of the Canadian Museum of History Award. You can view all the projects submitted by the students for this year's fair on our website at ottawaheritagefair.org. N'oubliez pas que vous pouvez visualiser tous les projets des élèves sur notre site web at ottawaheritagefair.org. The fair committee annually recruits volunteer judges who can adjudicate in English or in French. Without their dedication, we would not be able to recognize student excellence. Au courant des années, nous avons eu le privilège de compter sur des juges bénévoles pour évaluer les projets, des professeurs à leur retraite, des professionnels dans la communauté muséale et patrimoniale, ainsi que des amateurs d'histoire. Pour vous parler de son expérience comme juge bénévole, voici un message de M. Gilles Chartrand, membre de la Société historique du canton de Cumberland, 
et l'un de nos juges francophones qui œuvre comme bénévole pour notre fête depuis de nombreuses années. Depuis 2012, je me suis impliqué à titre de juge francophone ou bilingue pour, le, pour les fêtes régionales euh, du patrimoine d'Ottawa. J'ai constaté que nos jeunes sont fantastiques. Les centaines de projets qu'ils nous soumettent sont de très haute qualité. On remarque qu'ils se servent de la présentation orale et visuelle afin de faire passer leur message. Il est dommage qu'il y ait seulement que peu de gagnants. Maintenant, euh, la société du canton de Cameroun euh, offre 200 dollars en bourse aux jeunes qui soumettent des projets qui concernent les pionniers, les femmes d'autrefois, les moyens de transport, la rivière des Outaouais, les graveurs, les forgerons et tout ce qui touche le patrimoine. Alors, il y a une grande variété de sujets qui peuvent couvrir. Alors, les 200 dollars sont divisés en deux ou en trois ou en quatre, dépendant combien de personnes sont sur chaque projet. Et voilà, ceci est ma, ceci est ma présentation. Merci. Thank you, Jeanne Chartrand. I'd now like to announce the winner of the next award. The First Nations, Mitzi, and Inuit Award recognizes a research project that reveals the impact made by Indigenous people in Canadian history. Le Prix des Premières Nations, Métis et Inuit, reconnaît la recherche d'un projet qui démontre l'impact significatif des Autochtones sur l'histoire canadienne. And the First Nations, Mitzi and Inuit Award, goes to Anneri Patel from Cedarview Middle School for the project titled, Is it just a myth? Congratulations. Hello, my name's Aneri. I participate in the Ottawa Heritage Fair. My project was Canadian Mint. There are many, can, there are other cultures have lots of different types of mints and I thought it was very important to learn about Canada's. So I learned about Ogopogo and Sasquatch. And I learned a little bit how they're similar to other different types of myth, like the Loch Ness Monster and Bo Bigfoot. And I looked deeper to see if there are any connections and I learned about their history. I hope you enjoy reading about my project and learn something new. Thank you. And here is the winner of the next award. The Ontario Women's History Network Award recognizes a project with a primary focus on the contributions of women to Canadian history. Le prix du Réseau d'Histoire des Femmes de l'Ontario est décerné au projet qui met l'emphase sur la contribution des femmes dans l'histoire du Canada. And the Ontario Women's History Network Award goes to Zipporah Thom from Galashian Public School for the project titled Women's Fight for Rights. Congratulations! I realized that I wasn't very educated on Canadian women's history and wanted to know more about that subject. I learned about how women weren't allowed to vote outside of being married and a bill that was requested by Sir John A. Macdonald was denied on April 17, 1885. I also learned how there were organizations like Toronto, the Young Women's Christian Association, which reached out to black women and other minorities. This is important because it shows how women have come so far and makes a healthy and safe space for all genders and identities. Thank you for letting me participate in this year's Heritage Fair. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see from the background, uh, my native roots are very close to my heart. Comme vous voyez derrière moi, mes racines autochtones sont très près de mon cœur. Mes racines Abenaki, de la nation Algonquin. They are Abenaki roots from the Algonquin nation. Now, my grandmother, Rose, was always a very good teacher. And she told me that before we said anything, before we did anything, we have to think of the seven future generations that it's going to touch. That is you, that is your children. Ma grand-mère, Rose, me disait qu'il était important avant de faire quoi que ce soit, avant de dire quoi que ce soit, de penser aux sept générations futures que cela va toucher. She said that when the Creator made us, He gave us 
two ears to appreciate the songs of Mother Earth, two eyes to appreciate its beauty, two nostrils to appreciate its aroma and to sense where we were in the universe, and one mouth to share the medicine, the water, the food, and the words of Mother Earth. Ma grand-mère disait que lorsque le Créateur nous a créés, il nous a donné deux oreilles pour apprécier les chants de Mère Terre, deux yeux pour apprécier ses beautés, deux narines pour apprécier ses arômes, mais aussi pour sentir où on se trouvait dans l'univers, et une bouche pour partager la médecine, l'eau, la nourriture et les paroles de Mère Terre. My grandmother said that the Creator was very wise to have given us those seven holy parts in a very specific order and that too often we forget that when someone talks to us the first thing we have to do is listen to them and we have to look at them because often words are not enough then we have to sense with our heart what they're trying to say and only then should we speak ma grand-mère disait que le créateur était très sage nous avons donné les sept parties sacrées dans cet ordre très défini et que trop souvent on oubliait que lorsque les gens nous parlent, la première chose qu'il faut faire, c'est les écouter. Ensuite, il faut les regarder, parce que souvent, les paroles ne sont pas assez. Il faut sentir avec notre cœur ce qu'ils essaient de nous dire, et seulement en dernier devrait-on parler. So, ladies and gentlemen, as the day progresses, I wish for you that whenever you need to speak, that you use the right words, and that people will stop and listen, for that is respect. Alors, mesdames et messieurs, alors que la journée va, par, va avancer, j'espère que vous choisirez vos mots de façon très adroite et que les gens prendront le temps de vous écouter, parce que c'est ça le respect. Miigwech. Merci. Thank you. Merci, Daniel, pour cette belle présentation. I'd now like to announce the winner of the next award the Multicultural Society of Ontario Award. This award is given in recognition of excellent student achievement in research that exemplifies the diverse culture of Ontario. Le prix de la Société Multiculturelle de l'Ontario est décerné à l'élève dont le projet contribue à une compréhension approfondie des diverses cultures en Ontario. And the winner of the Multicultural Society of Ontario Award is Hampton Vikila from Glashan Public School for the project titled, What are the Significant Events and People in Early and Western Black Canadian History? Congratulations. Hi, my name is Han Tian. I realized there has been so much going on in this world about Black Lives Matter, and it was a great opportunity to discuss the overall impact of the movement. George's, George Floyd's story was a great inspiration for choosing this topic. This is important because it has been going on for way too long, and we need to make change in police and social structures. However, a major way to make change if young people talk about it and influence more generations to have discussions on this matter. While researching for the project, I learned so much about this topic. I discovered a lot about John Ware, where he came from, and his background story. I learned that Ember Valley was among several Albert communities settled in the early 20th century by early Black immigrants. This project gave me an opportunity to learn more about my community and how we are treated in this society. Thank you so much for letting me participate in this year's Heritage Fair. Le prix des Amis du Musée canadien de la guerre est accordé à un projet qui décrit un événement ou un aspect de l'histoire militaire du Canada jusqu'à aujourd'hui. The Friends of the Canadian War Museum Award recognizes a project which relates to a specific event or aspect of Canada's military history to the present day. And the Friends of the Canadian War Museum Award goes to Felix Graham Beaven from Glashan Public School for the project titled Comparing Wolf to Mopan. Congratulations. Hello, my name is Felix Graham Bevan of Glashan Public School and I am greatly appreciating the opportunity to share more about me and why I chose this topic. The reason is because I was deeply interested in the strange tactics and personality 
of General Wolf. I decided to make my presentation a comparison between him and General Montcalm. The Battle of Quebec was a highly important part of our history and was a defining moment to almost everything in Canada today. I made sure to cover it for that reason. I very much enjoyed collaborating with fellow classmates and teachers to make and improve my project. And I would be lying if I said I didn't appreciate listening to my other classmates' projects in order to provide my feedback about their strengths and goals. The Ottawa Catholic School Board Award is given for a project that highlights a person in Canadian history who dedicated their time and energies to advocate for one or more social justice issues, or that highlights the story of a Canadian social justice movement. Le Prix du patrimoine du Conseil scolaire des écoles catholiques d'Ottawa est accordé à un projet qui reconnaît le rôle significatif qu'ont joué les femmes dans l'avancement de la question de la justice sociale. Et le prix du patrimoine du Conseil scolaire des écoles catholiques d'Ottawa est remis à Alexia Dombé et Iman Oukassim de l'école Immaculada pour leur projet intitulé « Afrique-Ville ». Félicitations! Moi et ma partenaire, on a décidé de parler de Afrikville. Afrikville était une des premières communautés noires à être construite par des esclaves au Canada. Malheureusement, la ville de Halifax a décidé de démolir Afrikville. La communauté a de la difficulté à se rétablir et à trouver de nouvelles maisons parce qu'ils étaient pauvres et ils n'avaient pas beaucoup d'argent. C'est un événement très important pour la communauté noire canadienne au Canada. Ça demande que le racisme existait avant et n'a pas juste commencé aujourd'hui. Il n'y a pas une grande différence avec ce qui est arrivé avec Afrikville et ce qui est en train de se passer maintenant. Il y a quand même beaucoup de racisme, discrimination, gentrification et de la ghettoisation. Alors, c'est pour cela que nous avons choisi Afrikville pour ce projet et c'est pour cela que c'est important. Our fair could not take place were it not for the participation of our devoted educators. Barbara Brockman, a teacher at Glashan Public School, is one of these talented educators and a passionate supporter of the Ottawa Regional Heritage Fair program. Recognized for her flair in engaging students in Canadian history, she is the recipient of the 2002 Governor General's Award for Excellence in Teaching Canadian History and of the Elementary Teachers Federation of Ontario 2014 Writers Award. And now here is a message from Barbara Brockman. I've been involved with the Heritage Fair for probably 20 years in any capacity I've taught. As a uh, ESL teacher gifted regular students with either the junior or the intermediate grades. And I love it because it's so flexible. I support the Heritage Fair because the Heritage Fair supports the learning of students. And uh, it helps it, it supports it by encouraging them to use the medium of choice to inquire into Canadian perspectives and stories. In, um, in, in a bilingual setting. And also it, it uh, encourages them to have that community collaboration, which really helps with the, uh, the desire to, to learn and to share their learning. Um, I love it how the students do the inquiry pro, uh, project in the classroom, and then we take it out to uh, a broader um, audience, uh, not just our classroom, but in the schools that I've been involved in, we've done a school based fair where we invite the feeder schools and the parents to come in and it gives the students another chance to share what they've learned uh, with those. So the learning has a domino effect. It's not just for the students doing the research, but also for the people coming in uh, into our feeder school or into our school in order to learn about their projects. And it's one of the most exciting uh, environments of the school year because there's a real buzz when you have all those kids coming through, those parents coming through, different community members, learning things that they that they didn't know about. And um, and so uh, it, it also has a domino effect in that uh, at Glashan presently, our feeder schools have also been doing, um, have taken up doing the Heritage Fair. So now kids come into grade seven and eight and they, they have done it already. So they're even more inclined to uh, go into deeper research skills and use different kinds of, um, of, of uh, 
materials in both the archives and oral histories uh, to help them really learn about their subject. So I would like to thank the Heritage Fair and congratulate all the students involved this year. What a tough year setting uh, and setting to do it in. And yet you've all you've all done it and helped us learn more about our country as well. Congratulations. Thank you, Barbara. And now for the announcement of the winner of the next award. The Ontario Historical Society Award recognizes outstanding student achievement for research in Ontario's history. Le prix de la Société d'Histoire de l'Ontario reconnaît le travail de l'élève pour sa recherche exceptionnelle de l'histoire de l'Ontario. The Ontario Historical Society Award goes to Caitlin Hobbs from Glashan Public School for the project entitled How Did Provincial and Federal Relations Evolve After Confederation? Congratulations! I'm Kim Hobbs from Glashan. My project is about provincial and federal relations in Canada after Confederation, specifically the issues they had. I chose it because I wanted to learn about the events after Confederation and how the governments evolved to the system we have today. I learned a lot from this project and found it very interesting how many people stood up for what they believed in. I liked working with my classmates and learning more about Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, this now concludes the 2021 Ottawa Regional Heritage Fair Virtual Awards Ceremony. Thank you to everyone who made this event possible. In particular, hats off to teachers and students who've had a challenging year. It has been a pleasure being here with all of you today to host an educational and fun event that brings together youth from across Ottawa in a virtual environment. I invite you to visit the Ottawa Regional Heritage Fair's new website at ottawaheritagefair.org and to follow them on Facebook. Plus, be sure to check this October to see their plans to celebrate their 20th anniversary in 2022. Et oui, mesdames et messieurs, ceci conclut la cérémonie virtuelle de la remise des prix 2021 de la fête régionale du patrimoine à Ottawa. Merci à vous tous. Nous tirons notre chapeau et remercions les professeurs et les élèves qui ont connu jusqu'ici une année particulièrement difficile. Ce fut un vrai plaisir pour moi d'animer cette activité virtuelle éducative et amusante et de célébrer les jeunes de la région. Je vous invite à visiter le nouveau site web de la fête à ottawaheritagefair.org et de les suivre sur Facebook en 2022. La fête régionale du patrimoine à Ottawa commémorera son 20e anniversaire. Alors, au plaisir de vous accueillir l'année prochaine. Consultez le site web dès l'automne pour en apprendre plus. Mesdames et messieurs, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, merci, miigwech, bon appétit!